Therapy to this day remains such a taboo topic. Even though psychotherapy has been around for decades, first dating back to the study of the mind and behaviour by the ancient Greeks. There are many different types of mental health therapy. These can range from cognitive behavioural therapy, online therapy and even therapy animals. Although therapy has been around for so long, not many people know what the ins and outs of therapy look like and how effective a therapy session can be. Licensed therapists Rosie West and Margaret Livingston allowed me an insight into their practices and what a typical session for them looks like. Along with a deeper look into cognitive behavioural therapy, this documentary also includes a social experiment where three individuals tried out three different therapy apps for five continuous days before deciding whether they were effective or not. These three apps will be Headspace, WISA and What's Up, three low-cost style therapy apps. So I'm a person-centred counsellor, um, so that's the qualification, that was my study, was person-centred counselling, and that's under the humanistic umbrella of uh, different interventions in psychology. And it's really working with clients, there's no set client group, so it's whatever issue the client wants to bring into the room. I work with adults, couples and young people. And I've worked in various settings um, since qualifying, so whether in placement or volunteering, and I've been in private practice too, that's included like NHS, uh, charities, sub-sector organisations, a private sector organisation, um, and my private practice started in 2014. So I'm a psychotherapist and um, I work with depression, anxiety, um, all kind of mood and the anxiety disorders, but a special interest in trauma. Um, so I work with quite a lot of trauma patients and I work, I've got two different jobs, or three actually at the moment. I work um, a couple of days in an NHS post as a cognitive behavioural therapist and I have a private practice as well. I, um, and I also do some supervision for one of the universities for students who are going through the CBT course. Cognitive behavioural therapy is the most common therapy where patients usually attend a 30 to 60 minute session once a week, talking to their therapist about their thoughts and feelings. Therapists usually vary in technique, so while some focus on thoughts and how they affect their patients' feelings, others focus on feelings and how they affect their patients' thoughts. And feelings. Yeah, so I really want to know uh, how the client experiences their world, what it feels like to be them living their world. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's my focus. Yeah. I think it can be either, um, and I think that these processes can happen so quickly that it's sometimes out with our conscious awareness. So I typically wouldn't spend a lot of time thinking about whether it's our thoughts that are making us feel anxious or whether it's our anxiety that's making us worry. Um, what I focus on more is how we, how we respond to the thoughts or how we respond to the emotion um, because it can happen both ways and it can happen very quickly and different each time and I don't think it, it would be possible or even helpful to spend a lot of time trying to figure that out. Therapist Laurie Goblet says in her book, Maybe You Should Talk To Someone, that if you don't realise perfect is the enemy of good, then you may deprive yourself of joy. This ties into the therapy apps that two out of three of our individuals taking part in the experiment are using. Two of the apps have features where you can record positive and negative thoughts and feelings. My name is Caleb. Um, I am like diagnosed with like a... Um, depression and anxiety disorder that I'm on medication for and I attend counselling for. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I've downloaded the app that you asked me to, WhatsApp. I don't know if you can see it. You can zoom in on there. Yeah, WhatsApp. Um, and I've been using it today. Um, it's, it's an interesting little app. Um, there's quite a lot of good little resources on here. Um, there's quite a lot of information about the actual and mental illnesses themselves um, a little part where you can note you can like write down diary entries which I've been doing on my laptop anyway um, so it's quite handy to have a little app here um, that you can keep track of all your diary entries on like right here on the app so that's quite good um, you can take notes of like your positive and negative habits as well which I don't I try not to do um, but yeah 
So I've just tried out the first um, session of Navigating Change. Um, and before it starts, there was like a video explaining a thing called noting, which is a technique to use when using this app. And I think that was a really good start to it all. And it's just basically saying how when your mind wanders, you let it happen, you note it, and then you come back and continue with the course. Um, this is really good because my mind tends to wander a lot. So it's good to have that little technique of just thinking, okay, that's what I've thought about. And then moving back on with um, listening to what they're saying on the course. Um, you can also pick between 10 and 15 minutes. I went with 10 minutes to start with, but I think next time I'll definitely try the 15 as I just didn't think it was quite long enough. Um, there's a nice little bit of meditation at the beginning at the end, which I really I like about it. Um, and I do feel quite relaxed now um, and quite calm after doing it. Today on the app I used one of the functions which was for people that deal with anxiety and how it affects like them in the workplace. So the function we used was feel more control. So I sat there and went through it all and they kind of did a couple of the, like relaxing like start ups to kind of keep you calm so then it meant when you were doing the exercise you were fully clear mind ready to go so that was really quite good to sit there and just have somebody kind of go through breathing techniques because sometimes it is a case of just taking a step back and sitting down and taking it all on board and then you can deal with the situation that's in front of you. Also I meant to say um, I think that this, this experiment um, that, that we're doing is, I'm saying that we're doing, that you're doing, um, <laughs> it's come at a really good time obviously. Um, since we're on pure lockdown with uh, the COVID-19, um, you know what I mean, like being stuck inside gives you a lot of time to focus on negative thoughts and things like that and um, absolutely these, especially this one actually because it's got quite a lot of coping strategies, there's like a whole section for coping strategies. Um, it's quite good for kind of dealing with maladaptive thought patterns and thought processes and things like that. For me, things that make me anxious is people that are of higher authority of me and that stems from me having grown up with parents that have told me that you need to respect your elders, you need to respect people of higher authority and just to not be a bother to people but then that's possibly where my issue is that I've never wanted to be a bother to anybody so hence why when I'm in work and managers previous have told me to do something that I don't in my heart believe is within my job title or something I'm actually capable of doing I'll just do it and that's where I mess up and I don't ask for help because I don't want to be a bother and that's where you get managers being upset with you and that's where I end up not staying particularly long with jobs because I'm too scared to ask for help and I'm too scared to be a bother. The app's just kind of understood that right well you know where it stems from how to resolve it as in taking a step back and realizing that you're not being a bother by asking for help because that's where we all learn you can't just be expected to know something so you know that really worked well today a typical session for the therapist that i interviewed differed for each of them therapy is vastly different for each and every therapist and patient there is not a typical client so there's not a typical session. Uh, the most typical session uh, is the first session with a client. When we would be contracting and uh, setting boundaries and uh, they would be telling me some of the reasons why they were coming to counselling and I would tell them the way I practice and what they might expect. And that's after session one, it's difficult to really describe what's typical. During the process, there's the beginning of counselling, then there's a the middle where the kind of richer, deeper work's done and ending of, but that's a whole process, right? And that's not a typical session. I work mainly with acceptance and commitment therapy, which is one of the, the newer um, waves of cognitive behavioural therapy. So it's quite um, experiential. You know, we do a lot of exercises within therapy. So a typical session would be we would start with a kind of brief check-in of how the person's been over the past week or fortnight, depending how often I'm seeing them, um, review any kind of practices that they, they'd agreed to go off and do at home and how they got on with those. Um, typically we might do a couple of rating scales um, depending on what their issues are. So that might be a rating scale for 
mood symptoms or anxiety symptoms. Um, and then we choose a focus for that session. Um, and within ACT, there's um, six main processes um, that all aim to target finding a different way of responding to difficult thoughts and difficult emotions not necessarily like typical um cbt as it was first developed which is about challenging difficult thoughts but more about developing flexibility and how we respond to our emotions and our thoughts however with therapy apps there doesn't seem to be as much variation as seen in our experiment so i've just completed session two of navigating change and it was mainly about the physical sensations um during listening to it um my first thought was that it's just kind of repeated a few things from session one um i still do feel nice and calm and relaxed after it and thinking about how i can deal with change better so in that sense it is good um i'd quite like session three to be a bit different and to touch on other aspects um the thing I really do like is the meditation at the beginning. I feel like it keeps you focused throughout the whole thing um, and really gets your breathing good. This is my, well, I'd say third day using it because the second day we unfortunately couldn't use anything. We actually had a bit of sad news within the family that we had a passing of a, an auntie on my partner's side. So it was kind of a day where we had to deal with that. But then I thought, well, it's that actually might be quite useful for something just now so one of the factors on it was um like make meaning of like what's going on and how you're feeling with like the kind of the loss of a, a family member and the the exercise was actually quite similar to the one previous the only thing that was different about this one was they were asking us to put what was the negative thoughts in our head and they were kind of putting it in a list of what way we believe it would be useful and like what we think is negative and how we could kind of counteract it with like a positive thought so it was very similar to what we'd just done on the other one so it seems quite repetitive the only thing I could give positive to was something I'd mentioned in the app about previously feeling low and feeling like there was kind of no way out and the word self-harm was put down and that's when the system clicked to you and it was kind of responsive in the sense of do you feel okay can we help you do we need to phone support blah blah so it was good in the sense that if somebody was feeling low it does look like as if it would respond immediately to try and help the person to not go to that sort of part uh, it was it was quite helpful today so um like i was saying yesterday um obviously it's a very uncertain weird time now um, with the whole coronavirus stuff and, and everything um, as well, I got made redundant because of like, the economic impact on, well, obviously the economy um, of the whole virus. So I um, lost my job um, and now there's like there's nothing else to do. Um, university's cancelled, it's all done for first and second year students, um, no work, um, and I'm not allowed to leave the house other than one time a day and to go and get essential things. So. Um, it's quite easy to get in your head at that time, um, but today I went out for a, a quarantine walk, my, my one walk of the day, it was a really long one, uh, a way up, uh, it was basically a hike up a hill, um, and I was doing a lot of thinking, um, as, I, as I do, um, I started to kind of think about, you know, the what, what the future is going to look like um, with the whole virus situation, um, and it made me feel a bit anxious. Um, made me a bit worried, so um, I actually used a couple of the features in the app. So um, I went for the coping strategies, managing worries. Um, the only thing I would say is though that if you can't afford a therapist, and in some cases like myself when I was in a low stage, they take sometimes within the UK it takes about 12 weeks they said or 6 weeks and something quite a long time for somebody to go and actually see a therapist which is on the NHS so if you can't afford to go to therapy you'd expect that if you're getting on this I know usually people pay for these sort of things you would hope that it would give you some result but so far it's not doing too much like the the one that I done was the make meaning it 
didn't really do much more apart from just list about the things that were making me feel negative so so far it's not that great for what maybe I would need it might be good for somebody that's maybe got mild symptoms but I think if you've got something a wee bit more then you really need to possibly go to somebody that's an actual therapist. Well just while I was up there I was halfway through my hike just I was about to start heading back um, I went into the um, the personal section on the on the app and you can take a note of like positive um, habits that you have and like do a little diary entry so did a little diary entry up there took a note of a positive habit as well um, and yeah it was all it was all good I was kind of present in the moment and I got thinking about more positive things um, so definitely helpful in that respect. It's important to remember that you don't necessarily need to be dealing with any issues or trauma in order to go to therapy. Just like with exercise it's important to look after both your physical and mental health. Um, I'm not sure everyone needs it, but I'd say that all of us would benefit. Whether we felt a strong issue that we wanted to deal with or whether we were viewing it time for ourselves to explore what's going on, personal development, I think everyone would benefit as long as they came along to the counselling room with a willingness to engage. And some clients don't have specifics, it's quite vague what they might first come with and it might develop into a specific, we find something and some are very clear, I want to work on X and that's what we work on. I think anybody could benefit from therapy, especially acceptance and commitment therapy because we've all got the same type of minds that have evolved in such a way that they can cause us suffering. We've all got minds that can go into unhelpful problem solving. For example, if you were feeling anxious, then what the mind would typically do is start going, why am I feeling anxious? You know, and what kind of questions come up when, when the mind asks, why am I feeling anxious? Well, the generally answers that are going to make you feel more anxious. Um, and that's just the way that our minds have kind of evolved to work, um, is that we can get caught up into unhelpful thinking and then they can do that regardless if they have a mental health diagnosis or a particular issue. Um, and the focus of ACT is really about building a kind of meaningful and valued life. And um, there's probably not many people who are like, perfect, I know I'm not perfect, um, and um, I think that a lot of people could benefit from it, but not everyone believes in or, or sees, a, sees a need for therapy, so equally that's okay as well. The benefits of cognitive behavioural therapy is that real therapists can give their patients homework to do for the following week, whether that be breathing exercises or reading. Generally we might, if we've done an exercise within a session, then it might be to go away and practice that throughout the week. So that might be a brief mindfulness practice, not necessarily meditation, but just a way of getting present and getting a bit more space between your thoughts and your emotions so that you can choose more effective action um, in spite of not feeling great. Um, or it might be something like keeping a kind of thought diary and um, keeping a journal of when difficult thoughts and emotions are showing up and how you responded to those. Um, it might be to go off and watch a TED talk that I recommended. Um, or it might be more specific things like setting goals, asking them to go away and think about their goals and set goals. But generally there will be work to do out with session because People don't get better by coming to see and speak to somebody for a 50 minutes a week. Yeah. They get better by making the changes in their life outside sessions. So most of the work happens now with the sessions. I'm just, you know, help, help them as a guide to decide what that's going to look like, really. The individuals taking part in our experiment seem to be finding their apps useful. However, I wanted to see what licensed therapists had to say about these apps. I'm not familiar with them, I've never referred anyone to them, but I get this digital 24-7 world that, that we live in. Um, if a client was you know, looking for some sort of support or help, uh, I would say make sure that whatever app they're going to is maybe recommended or uh, has been given a stamp from the NHS, because some have and some haven't. I think that with the development of all of, all of this technology, unfortunately, there's um, risks that there's a lot of maybe apps out there that, that haven't been.
been they don't have a proper evidence base behind them that are maybe not always the best suited for people with specific problems um, so I mean I guess it's better help is that one where you actually in touch with a therapist or yeah. is it just yeah yeah um, as long as a proper assessment has been done and there's procedures in place should that person you know present with some kind of risk to themselves or others then you know I think that's probably a good way of opening up therapy to more people who maybe couldn't afford it or don't want to travel but my preference would always be face to face. So I've just finished day three of navigating change and um, it was basically just a continuation from day two but added a few different aspects which I actually really enjoyed and um, I got quite excited to do to do today's session so it makes me think that I'm getting a lot from it. Um, another thing I much prefer doing it for 15 minutes I think the extra 15 minutes although it doesn't sound like much you get a lot more from it um, because there's just a nicer bit of relaxation at the start and the end and then you get like the full bit in the middle. I did today was called love yourself so a lot of my anxiety comes from a lot of people kind of in management and maybe teachers and stuff like that that were very you're not going to make much of yourself if you don't like do good grades that's it you're kind of there's nothing you can do and our school was very tailored towards kids that were wanting to go to university so I thought right well something like this I'm not very good at kind of recognizing where my successes are and where my kind of strengths are so I just ended up thought right this might be quite a good one to do um, again it was just so similar the format to it is just very similar to the rest of the exercises I've been doing um, the only positive was the kind of breathing exercises they're very kind of calming and it does allow you to kind of sit back and then be able to kind of open up but the app if you don't have the money like I said probably in my last video for therapy for somebody to actually reply back to you and kind of give you what you're feeling the app's very kind of mild and it's for people that are maybe just feeling a bit low not like really down I feel as if this isn't the the right app for somebody within this sort of kind of headspace mental health and well-being is something we should all be talking about Especially in this day and age, it's just as important to take care of our mental health as it is to take care of our physical health. So, they again, um, I went through the thinking patterns part of the app because that's something that I've spoken to um, with counsellors about and things like that, thinking patterns and kind of identifying them. Um, so, we went through the thinking patterns part, um, mind reading, like are you assuming other people's thoughts and whatnot. Um, ask yourself what you actually know about a situation kind of thing um, which was quite helpful um, just because it's I, I was just having a look through it earlier and I thought that it was, it was quite good um, went through the the um, the worry management part here as well which was quite good um, and the positive steps as well just since it was the last time that I was going to be using that I thought I might as well get a wee look um, at what kind of things it would suggest that you do in the future and what kind of action plan you can set up for yourself so overall i have really enjoyed my first five days using headspace and i'll definitely continue to use different aspects of it um there's a lot more sessions of navigating change that i want to do but i also want to have a look at the millions of other things on the app that there is to explore which i haven't seen yet so the app is pretty useful i'd say um, if you are actively um, trying to um, get better. So I'd say if you've got um, like kind of mental health issues or um, if you're feeling a bit sh <laughs> <laughs> Um If you've got mental health issues or you're, you're feeling a little bit low um, and you're like motivated and actively looking to like cope with it and deal with it, then this app's perfect for that. Um, there's a lot of really useful um, resources on here, like the help right now section is actually really good. Um, it's got a lot of coping mechanisms, like um, like positive coping mechanisms that you can use um, like right there and then when you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling really low, if you're feeling really angry. Um, 
you know there's like little different games that you can play to get grounded and um, there's parts that have like breathing exercises there's the little scale that i was talking about before where you can like actually put like a number you can like quantify how bad the situation is and look at it objectively which is really good there's a little quote section as well which i thought was quite nice there's like uplifting quotes that kind of inspire you i mean feel better and motivate you kind of thing which is quite good um one that i actually used the here and now one um i went for a hike the other day and like i said i got quite anxious about um, the whole coronavirus situation so um i used the here and now part i was like right let's just bring myself back to reality for a second and get out of like my daisy daydream that i had for um for this coronavirus and there's also quite a lot of uh, pretty useful resources on here for actually understanding uh, mental illnesses so there's like a whole section that gives you information about depression anxiety um, self-esteem issues stress anger and um, so that's quite good and then the final section as well personal and um, where you can take notes of positive negative habits and um, you can write notes and you can write little diary entries as well so that's quite good um I tried one of the exercises on it called self um self-esteem that's something i very much lack on so i wanted to maybe give it a go see how see how it works for myself um the first exercise i tried out was now i'm gonna get the name of it probably wrong but it was like dream big now the only problem i had with it was that it was just very similar to everything else that i've done in the sense that it just asked me exact same questions as what it really did in the other thing the only difference was I seen something on it and I wanted to give it a go to see if it maybe did anything, which was um, it said, oh, you can either reply with this generic reply that they give you or you can say help. So I thought, right, okay, help might be something that might actually be quite useful because like the thing I spoke about last time about self-harm, when I'd mentioned that the system instantly knew, right, okay, we need to take action. And it was like they actually knew, right, okay, we need to say this to you and we need to help you out in that sense to get you help there and then. Now, the problem I had with that, the help thing didn't come up as like an actual help. It just came up with like settings and things like what's our privacy what's this like terms and conditions which isn't something that like if i went on the app and i needed help i'd kind of want somebody to help me there and then um i would say it's definitely made me feel calmer and less anxious about the current situation in the world um and what's going on and i don't know whether if other things happen in my life i could go back and just do the sessions from the session one again um to like refresh it in my mind um, I would definitely recommend it to people that are, do struggle with navigating change and people that just find it hard to let go of things as well. Um, I know that one of the things that I've kind of struggled with in the past um, when trying to kind of deal with mental illness is um, a lot of the time I'll get motivated to do something right there in the moment and I'll download an app or I'll start doing something to try and make myself feel better and I'll lose motivation like within hours kind of thing um, and then I'll just forget about it and I'll get back into a hole um, within a little bit. Um, so one thing that this app doesn't do is it doesn't give you push notifications. I think that um, the app giving you push notifications to kind of give you a little nudge to be like right hey write an entry in your diary or here have you had a look at these coping mechanisms here and um, I think that that would be quite good. Uh, so push notifications would be nice. Um, as well, maybe a focus less on negative habits. Um, I, I just don't think that um, focusing on negative things is a healthy thing to do if you are someone who is mentally ill because you, a lot of people who are mentally ill have a tendency to fixate on things like that. Um, so fixating on negative habits, fixating on um, the maladaptive thought patterns that kind of have you thinking into a hole where you kind of fixate on something and um, you, you start stressing over. Basically thinking about negative things kind of has you fixating on them and then you start to stress more about them, you get more upset about them, you get angrier about them, you get more anxious about them. So um, yeah, I, I think that maybe I focus more on positive things and the app would do better. <coughs> um, I would also definitely recommend the sleep features for people. Um, I found that last night's one was really good and I fell asleep so fast. 
um, and there's so many other sleep features for different for different people because some people might have preferred the one that I didn't um, and some people might not like the one that I found really useful but there's so many options that there's probably one for everyone um, and I'll probably be using that sleep one every night from now on um, so yeah I've really enjoyed it and it's been good to start getting into something like that because I haven't really ever before but yeah I think it's been really good for me yeah all in all pretty pretty good little app um yeah I definitely recommend it to someone if they're um trying to be proactive um of like with looking after their mental health so yeah thank you very much hope that that was helpful for you um yeah I'll send over all your all these entries just now. Now another thing as well with the app which I'm having the problem with because I am very terrible for forgetting things like I need to have a routine going I need to know right okay that's booked in and if I don't have that kind of routine of like okay well I'm like you would with like a therapist or like you're going to like a group or something you know right it's every Wednesday at this time here then you're more inclined to go but when it's on your phone and everything you kind of forget about it and another thing for people that like myself who try and keep myself off social media as much as possible if I can then it's kind of difficult to use the app if you're not wanting to try and be on your phone so it's it didn't benefit me but who knows for somebody else it could be really good but for myself it didn't really have much impact and the things that did help me while I was feeling down throughout the, night, the past couple of weeks with everything that's going on was actually just being outside and just keeping busy doing stuff that I find creative and then that ends up me kind of keeping myself calm and composed and I was able to kind of at the time I was feeling down I knew right okay this isn't going to be for long and felt much better so I think the app's a nice idea but it just it's very generic it needs a lot more and unless you've got the money to pay for the therapist I think it's not exactly the a uh, great app but um for me I didn't I didn't find too much from it these apps although not as effective as cognitive behavioral therapy are a good stepping stone in the right direction of normalizing talking about mental health the world of therapy is endless whether you want to invest in a qualified therapist, use therapy animals, or use apps that allow you to log your thoughts in a journal and practice mindfulness to help reduce your anxieties, there are always resources you can use for help. Usually, during the sessions, the ending is something that I and the client would be talking about. So, uh, and again, it depends why they first come to the chair. They might say, I want to work on X they get clarity about X or they have acceptance about X and that's all they wanted and then they want to leave so it's quite clear. With others where it's not so clear, uh, we, we do reviews, we check in what we're working on next and usually it's agreed, not always, but usually it's agreed so that there's a phased ending you know, and, and they know when a date that we're working towards. Sometimes it could be very noticeable, especially to the world, it could be um, someone came lacking in confidence, hoping that they could uh, apply for university and the noticeable difference is that they found the confidence or the courage to apply and they accepted so the world can see that, they can share that with the world. But often it might just be some internal change that's not so obvious to people that they have heightened self-awareness. So myself and the client will be aware of that, but outside of the room, people might not be aware until they maybe notice different responses from the client and their relationships. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it will be based partially on what I can see and what I can hear, but also a lot on what they are telling me about what they've been doing out with sessions. So if they've been moving towards their goals, if they've been making Sort of behavioural changes that have made an impact on their relationships, on their work, on how they're treating themselves, how they're treating other people um, and you know they've made good progress because we always establish goals at the beginning and if they've made good progress towards those goals then I'll know that yeah they're they're ready and if they have all the tools um, they need in order to 
you know, kind of put in place for future difficulties, that's also important because for me, therapy is about teaching people how to become their own therapist. Yeah, so giving them the tools that they can then transfer and use in lots of different situations um, in order to effectively manage any difficulties in the future. Now more than ever, in the global pandemic we are all facing, it is so important to look after your mental health as well as checking up on others. Call your friends and family, connect with the people that you love, continue to laugh and smile. Therapy has been around for decades and will continue to grow and evolve as doctors and therapists work together to find new methods and practices. However, whether we look at mental health therapy now or in years to come, it is inevitable that it will always be effective and it will always be incredibly important to talk about.